Okay. Uh, welcome, everyone. It's really nice to see you. Look at all your faces there in boxes. Uh, it's the JS Core Dev Team Weekly Sync. It's the uh, 11th of February, uh, 2019. If you are here, can you please put your name on the attendees list on the hackpad? Uh, I'll just put it in the chat again, just in case anyone new arrived since Jacob put it in there. Um, and then we need a note taker, which is Jacob. Thank you, Jacob. Uh, and um, cool. Okay. What do we do now? Uh, well, normally we do a weekly update uh, and everybody tells each other what they did last week, uh, what they're going to do this week and what they're currently blocked on. Um, so if you haven't already, then please put your uh, weekly update in the hackpad. You know where it is. Um, just put your name and done and blocked and next. And we shall uh, slowly scroll through and talk through what we've done, what we've blocked on, and what we're doing next. So uh, right at the top, it's me. Um, and so I will start. Uh, so last week, um, I added a ls command to the IIM, the IPFS install manager tool. Um, and so now you can just type I'm ls, uh, or you can just type I am ls, and it will give you all of the versions for all of the implementations. Uh, but it shows you which ones you got installed, which ones, which one you're currently on, which ones are available remotely that you don't have installed yet. Um, or you can specify like a particular, uh, a particular implementation and just see those ones. Um, what else have I been doing? Uh, I've been working on CID version 1 base 32 by default. Um, I've added a whole bunch of pull requests there. Uh, and uh, the DHTPR, that's been merged. Thank you, Vashko, uh, and everyone else who worked on that. Um, it's, it's gone in. It's there. Uh, so what I did was I did a release, 0 0.35. It's a pre-release. So uh, the warning, there are, there are dragons. Um, and uh, things that I've noticed already. The uh, lock file has been unable to update lock within stale threshold, um, which is a bummer because that actually uh, quits your daemon, uh, which is uh, which is not not great. Uh, hang on a second, people are messaging me. I'm just going to have to put on do not disturb. Um, yeah, and but the other problem which I'd noticed, which is actually I think the thing that we really need to fix is the CPU pegged at 100%, and um, that is the reason why it can't get to locking, updating the lock file. So um, things are not brilliant at the moment, but they will get better. Uh, but that is something I aim to have a look at uh, this week. I want to test out DHT stuff before it before it goes out. Um, so uh, what else? Uh, yeah, the uh, IPFS HTTP client, um, the tests, there's this one weird trick that you can do uh, in Go IPFS. If you specify the test profile when you're doing an IPFS in it, um, it I don't know exactly what it does. I didn't, couldn't find any documentation on the exact specifics of what the test profile does um, yet. But uh, it made the tests go well fast. Uh, they were, came down from like 14, on my MacBook, 14 minutes to five minutes. Uh, and on CI on Mac, I saw it was like, it was sim very similar sort of situation. So that's amazing. Uh, and a, basically a free upgrade of like 10 minute quicker tests, which is just uh, unbelievable. Um, I'm not blocked on anything. Uh, next up, uh, the a while ago now, the IPFS uh, HTTP client was renamed from IPFS API, uh, and if uh, and David Diaz has uh, put, posted a uh, nice graphic of the number of downloads for both of these, uh, and it's about time we uh, looked at addressing the people who are still using the old renamed version because there's a different package they should, should be moving over um, for all of the new features and performance stuff um, and um, yeah, that would help them to move over. So we need to tell them somehow that they're using the old version. Um, there's already a deprecation notice on the old module, uh, but that's clearly not enough. So um, I'm going to do something about that this week. Um, like I said before, I want to look at DHT testing. Um, and I'm hoping to continue with the CID version 1 is 32 by default uh, endeavor. Um, and I've got uh, basically, li I'm listing out the um, the pull requests that as I'm opening them on the um, issue I've linked there. That's everything that I'm doing. Does anyone have any questions quickly?
All right, cool. <laughs> Next up on the list is uh, Vashko. Hi, Vashko. Would you like to give us your update, please? Hey, everyone. Uh, so as Alan told you, the DHTPR was finally ready and merged. Uh, I also created uh, three pull requests for uh, controlling the number of uh, open connections. And it is also configurable in the config file of uh, GSAPFS. Basically, there is just one PR. There is the main PR for GSAPFS that still needs a review. And uh, besides all this, I also started uh, continued uh, the work that I was that I've been doing in the past regarding the LIP2P interrupt tests. And now I have finally a pull request with the interrupt test setup and also a first set of tests for the connect between uh, a Go and a JS uh, LIP2P daemon. So for the for this week, I want to help Alan with the DHT test, and also get the the interop pull request shipped, which needs to be that one that I previously described, and the one that I did before. There is the npm go lip to be dependency which currently in the PR that I have only supports Linux, but I will also make the changes uh, before merging it to get the CI green in uh, all the environments and uh, also create uh, the HT interrupt test. Uh, then I also want to uh, enable, enable the gossip sub implementation, the chain safe systems guys, uh, mostly my career, have now an initial implementation in a pull request. I want to review it this week and also improve the documentation for JS uh, to pub sub and uh, add support uh, in the daemon and daemon client for pub sub in order to allow them to afterwards do the interrupt tests for the implementation. And that's it for me. Any questions? I have a question about the gossip sub. Um, so I don't know who Chainsafe Systems are. They have built gossip sub and uh, sub, and they are pull request thing. Is that right? Uh, so basically, uh, um, Chainsafe Systems are uh, uh, they are using uh, Lip2P and uh, they wanted to to have gossip sub, and they are now implementing it. And uh, we have been talking with them. Uh, since like you know maybe a month ago and we are trying to, to help them like with uh, guidelines and uh, how we want the, the things to to go nice so uh that so that is it the implementation implementation is basically done is that right uh, there is a, an implementation i don't know uh it, okay. <laughs> how, how is the site but i want to to review it this week and give that's it, very exciting give, give initial feedback for them. Yeah, cool. Very cool. Okay. Um, awesome. Any other questions for Vashko? Okay, we will move on. Um, Jacob, would you like to give us your update, please? Uh, last week, we released a hotfix for the S3 data store to improve some error handling around the AWS SDK because um, it likes to call back multiple times. So we added once around that to prevent it. And there's also some um, improvements to the sample lock file and the examples for whoever would like to lock their S3 buckets. Um, updated some docs for the Ager pre-release, nothing big there. Um, then mostly worked on pull mplex of basic benchmarks there. I'm basically working in libp2p test suites. So I'm just going to be working this week on finalizing uh, that and doing testing up through JSIPFS to make through make sure everything is good to go. Uh, but we did see some pretty nice performance improvements over the current lib to be MPLEX implementation. So we'll be working on that. Um, also be working with Alex on a blog post from April on IPFS and the S3 data store. So hopefully we'll have something out in the next week or two or something. And yeah, I think that's it. Does anybody have questions?
Okay, you're free to go. <laughs> uh, all right, next up is Alex. Hi, so uh, yeah, tried to help uh, Volker get his JSIPLD API changes in. Um, trying to make NPM and IPFS more stable. So I upgraded to the latest version of JSIPFS uh, and it seems like there's a memory leak in there somewhere because uh, it just runs for a bit and then falls over. Um, so at the moment we're constraining all the uh, Docker containers. So if it falls over, it should then just like come back up uh, without wedging the box, which is what it was doing before, which was kind of tedious. Um, so yeah, I need to track down what is causing this memory leak. Um, cause it's kind of the only thing that's changed is changing the version of IPFS. Um, so yeah, that's going to be fun. Uh, yeah, did some small releases of, uh, Unix Fs. Um, nothing massively interesting there. So, uh, not blocked in anything. Uh, tomorrow we're having our first package manager weekly sync. So if anyone wants to come to that, I can, uh, stick the details, uh, somewhere for people to see. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be looking at the package manager's roadmap as well, um, doing that blog post uh, with Jacob. And then if uh, the IPRD changes go in, I'll start, uh, I'll merge the uh, PRs that allow the Unix Fest and MFS stuff to use it. And then it'd be nice to start doing the uh, async iterator ports of those, those libraries as well. Uh, that's going to be me. Any Any questions? Awesome, thank you, Alex. Uh, next up, Volker, as he's typing, he's laying the tracks as it as he goes. Uh, please, would you like to give us your, your update? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I just remembered something. So um, I was working on the still on the JS IPLD API things. Um, it's close. Um, so I got, uh, I fixed all the things that Alex mentioned. Now it's time to fix all the things that Ellen mentioned. Um, so I was so proud of mixing promises with callbacks, but Ellen is not really a fan of this. <laughs> so I will probably uh, promisify all the stuff. Um, yeah. Um, but during, while I was doing this, um, Alex was pointing out that there's a problem with using async functions within the async waterfall stuff. So it won't probably transpile for browsers. And while doing this, I found out that there isn't a good way of running um, the tests against the actual build we are doing for the browsers. So the, the thing that we distribute is not the thing we test against. There's a PR open, which I just put into my notes. This was what I was typing about. And while I was doing this, I found out that there's tests in interface IP of this core that currently don't pass in the browser if you enable the production build. Yes, um, so this <laughs> took a lot of time. <laughs> um, and then I do, yeah, so, yeah. And I do some IPLD stuff that is not interesting for this meeting. And I'm not logged. And next will be yeah, do, finishing the JS IPLD stuff and hopefully get it merged this week. Um, yeah, that's all from my side. Oh, any questions for Volker? No? Okay, cool. Oh, I'm glad you've caught some bad things. That sounds really good <laughs> and slightly embarrassing, but uh, you know. <laughs> okay, uh, let's move on. Any, uh, we've done questions. Uh, next up, we've got Zane. Cool. So, uh, filed a PR for the JS IPFS repo. Um, some things new. I just kind of went at it. So if there are things that are like, oh, what's this? Um, just let me know and I'll address it. Uh, the other thing was that there are like lots of like sort of little dependencies uh, in terms of tasks. So like FS data store, it relies on, which then sort of relies on data store core. But I just kind of followed the pattern from the data store interface. So it, in theory works. <laughs> but I haven't actually run it like against um, anything that's live, so to speak. Um, yeah, other than that, um, next would be addressing any sort of PR comments and then uh, probably picking up another of those async awesome endeavors. Um, I'm happy to also just like 
start chopping away at the dependency tree to then be able to make that work. Um, or if people have other suggestions, I think Jacob, you mentioned that P2P, they can do that too. Cool, okay. If anyone has time to have a look at that uh, PR, then please, please go for a review. Um, I will try and get to it if I can this week. Um, but yeah, thank you. Um, and yeah, it'd be rad if you could uh, just keep on trucking and do some more. <laughs> okay, I might take on the FS data store. I saw your name by it, but then, or yeah, if, I if, I, if I put my name by it and I haven't done it, that, then that's absolutely take it. <laughs> okay, cool. I, I'm an internal optimist, so I think I can do things, but I can't always do them. <laughs> right. uh, but I get there eventually, but you know. Um, uh, big stack. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Any other questions for Zane? All right. Thank you, Zane. Um, we've reached the end. Uh, does anyone have any other questions or comments or um, things they'd like to say or would just like to say hi? All right. Uh, cool. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Um, it was very nice to see you all. And uh, I'll see you next time for another exciting edition of the JS Core Dev Weekly Team Sync. All right. Bye. Bye.